time, lots of things. So this is going to show you why it depends. Um, cold temperatures cause winter injury. Um, as far as time of year, there's different types of injury that occur during the spring, the late frost, we see the death of the flower buds, the things have leafed out, but that's what we have seen in, the, in 2007 and 2012. So that's fairly classic, and that's what we see most often. Um, in the fall, we've also seen early frost, and so that it doesn't even have to be that cold, but we see the winter injury to fruit itself in um, propagating fruiting types, and I can show you some pictures. I'll show you pictures of all these. I'm in a minute. In the winter, it gets very cold, like it has been this winter, and you can get winter injury to some buds, and I did find some winter injury, and I'll show you um, some examples of those as well. Um, and then the late dormant season, you have fluctuating winter temperatures where it gets a little bit warm, and then it gets cold, and then you lose those buds again, too. So that's um, lots of different possibilities of when you can get damage. And then, I was trying to figure out the critical temperatures for you and putting it all in this table, and it got too complicated because it really depends on the time of year and what type of injury you will uh, come across. So in the winter, the, the sort of the number to keep in mind is minus 10 Fahrenheit. That's when you'll see damage to your blackberry plants in the middle, the deepest part of the winter. Although, in some locations, I've seen it as far as in damage as um, high as above positive. So it sort of depends on Blackberry plants, how different they are. Um, raspberries, on the other hand, they love the cold. Minus 20 to minus 30 degrees Fahrenheit, they'll get no winter injury. And then those other temperatures where those other crops are up there as well, just to kind of give you a point of reference, blackberries are a southern plant, like John says. And raspberries and strawberries and grapes should be all over the place there as well. In the springtime, the freezing temperature is slightly below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So keep that in mind as well because you will get damage to your green tissue or your open flowers when it gets below 32 degrees, similar to what you would have happen in strawberry plants, especially in the blossoms. Um, there's a simple method, and you might have seen this online, where you just cut the, the, the canes and put them in a plastic bag and wait a couple of days. But I think actually there's a better method to just go out to the field, and that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to pretend to go out to the field and look at the tissue as well. So here's an example. This was a couple of years ago up in Laurel Springs. So this is one of the research stations. This is a before and after, 26 degrees Fahrenheit. On the left-hand side, same exact cluster. You can see the developing blackberries right there, nice and green. Uh, a couple days later, after 26 degrees Fahrenheit, that's what happened to those blackberries. Um, so that was well below freezing, that's 32 degrees, a red raspberry in the field right next door, no damage. So these are very sensitive to those temperatures. And I've heard growers in um, Virginia, Chuck Dyer, have said, it doesn't even have to be near 32 degrees and you'll see this type of damage. So if you have um, expectations or, or desires to produce Primate cane fruiting blackberries in areas where you're going to be um, on that borderline of having all temperatures at 32 degrees or so, this is something to keep in mind because this will happen to you. <coughs> this is what we see as winter injury a lot of the plots that I work in at different uh, locations. The, the left is blackberry winter injury, on the right is raspberries. You'll see irregular bud break. You'll see a lot of new growth at the bottom. Those are the new primate canes coming out. So that's a typical winter injury, and we score plants for those every year. Um, and that's something that you don't want to have. Hopefully the breeders will take care of that before you get to the yield. This is an example, too, of the same type of thing. This is a trellis, um, this trellis system that um, John talked about when we came to in this picture. You can see all the floor things right there. No leaves on them. They have been, had winter injury. New are coming out too, so that's a typical example of what's going on with those. Um, so in late winter, this is some of the damage that can occur in the more northern climates. These again, who we sent to me, so when it gets really cold, cold below that um, minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit temperature, you'll see that blackening in the bud there on the left, and then you can actually see some um, um, Browning of the vascular tissue on the canes itself, too. So those are two different types of injuries. We have blood injury and cane injury. Here are some pictures that we took in the spring of 2007, I believe. This, uh, this is a blackberry plant and uh, broken bud and started to develop. We had that temperature, that Easter freeze, and all the primary buds died. But when they're a week later on the left hand side, you can see actually new growth coming in. So that was the secondary buds, and we actually had a decent crop because that secondary bud and that blackberry was able to produce. Uh, on the right hand side is an example of 
those clusters that were killed, you can see that center part there is dead and flat. So that produced no fruit. Even though you'll we'll see flower petals out there. Um, so this is an example of that trellis system that we have in that uh, John mentioned, the shift trellis, the rotating cross arm trellis. We have this trellis going in all directions, north, south, east, west, and then each north, south, east, west, and, and each one of those directions we have it either facing the north, south, we have it facing west or east. And the east, west, we have it facing north or south, so we know which orientation is going to work out best for white rootlet and wheels. <coughs> so we have that out there. We do use that row cover on there mostly in the spring. We didn't use it in the deepest part of winter because I didn't think that was important, but we had used it in the springtime, and it has kept those plants from dying, or the new buds from dying. So I think we're going to stop here, and we're going to actually do a little bit of work. Um, on each one of your tables, I put some canes, and, okay, I've got a little microscope here. I need an assistant. Maybe my antenna can from Michaels. Everybody heard of Michaels. It's like a craft store. They work pretty well. This one, I came with four, I think, different magnifying lens sizes, $39. The other ones, that the small pocket size ones, the ones were $6.99 for two or three of those, too. So it's pretty easy, something you can throw into your car or your truck real easily. This little microscope here, I don't know if the extension agents have anything, this is this was $50, a really nice USB port, you can actually take pictures with this thing too. So here we have... So here is a button, this is probably at about 10x magnification. Everybody see something? Do they have something similar like that for you? So get just that little piece isolated there. All right. Daniel, is it okay if I cut on this table? Sure. 